Hello everyone, my name is Chris Kim and today we're going to talk about what's new with the Algorand 3.16 protocol upgrade. Let's first talk about the biggest upgrade which is the reduction of block time by 400 milliseconds. This means this upgrade drops the block time from 3.7 seconds to 3.3 seconds. But it also means as soon as the block is added to the blockchain, all of the transactions that are included in that block are final. So with this upgrade, now your transaction on the Algorand blockchain can be finalized in 3.3 seconds with no uncertainty. This is possible because the Algorand blockchain cannot fork, thanks to its consensus protocol, Pure Proof of Stake. So when we say your transaction is final in 3.3 seconds, as long as the Algorand blockchain is not congested, we actually mean that. You don't need to wait six or seven blocks to make sure your transaction went through. I'll leave a link in the description to an article that explains how the Algorand core developers took off 0.4 seconds from the block time. Next up, we have group resource sharing for application calls. To understand how big this change is, let me provide you with some context. First, you need to understand what a reference array is. To prevent abuse and high performance of the Algorand blockchain, each application call is limited to eight references. And these references are application IDs, assets, accounts, and boxes. In other words, the Algorand smart contract doesn't have access to the entire Algorand blockchain state, and it can only access states that are specified in the application call reference arrays. Second, you need to understand what an atomic transfer is. The Algorand protocol has a native feature called atomic transfers. Atomic transactions lets you send multiple transactions simultaneously and execute them all by grouping them into an atomic group. If one of those transactions fail, all the other transactions in the same atomic group fail as well. This is extremely helpful for cases like trades and token swaps that require bi-directional transactions. So you don't need to set up complex logic like hash time lock contracts to ensure trust in that trade. Now that we understand what reference arrays and atomic transfers are, Let's now talk about group resource sharing. Before the Algorand 3.16 protocol upgrade, each application call only had access to its own reference array limited to eight references. For example, let's say there are two application call transactions, transaction A and transaction B. If both transactions need to access USDC, you will need to include the asset ID for USDC in both reference arrays. But now with group resource sharing, transactions can access other reference arrays that are in the same atomic group. So now you only need to reference the asset ID for USDC in transaction A, and transaction B will be able to reference the USDC ASA. This means since you can group up to 16 transactions in an atomic group, each application call can reference up to 128 references instead of eight references. Group resource sharing is brilliant because it massively increases the amount of blockchain state you can access without sacrificing the performance of the Algorand blockchain. There are more upgrades coming to reference arrays in the near future, so stay tuned for that. The next big upgrade is timestamp control for dev mode. When builders build Algorand smart contracts, they usually build and test their smart contract in a local net, either with Algokit's local net or sandbox. Both local networks turn on dev mode by default, which is a mode where a new block is only produced when the transaction is submitted to the local network. Dev mode allows transactions to go through instantly, which is immensely helpful during development and testing. However, since a new block is not added regularly like Algorand's mainnet or testnet, it wasn't easy to test smart contracts that depended on time. For example, a smart contract that calculates interest over time or a lottery that ends at a certain date. Now with the new API for block timestamp and dev mode, you can now fast forward in time and test your logic that depends on time. So no more deploying your unfinished smart contract to testnet and waiting in real time to test out your logic. Just fast forward your block timestamp in dev mode. Next, more logging and opcode budgets with Simulate. If you don't know what Simulate is, I'll leave a link in the description that explains everything about Simulate. But in short, it lets you simulate a transaction without actually sending the transaction to the network and getting the transaction result. Simulate is great for cases like instantly reading smart contract state for free and retrieving debug information during testing. Now, logging is a great debugging tool that lets developers understand what's happening during smart contract execution. However, on Algorand mainnet, you can only log up to 32 separate logs per app call with a total 
of 1024 bytes. This limit is necessary for blockchain performance, but a point of frustration during development. Now with this upgrade, developers will be able to log up to 2048 logs with over 60,000 bytes with simulate endpoints. Opcode budget is a computational budget that limits how much computation each application call can use. There's a limit of 700 opcode budgets per application call because unlike Ethereum, Algorand application calls do not have dynamic fees that depend on computational cost of that transaction. Now, if you need more opcode budget for an application call, you do what's called an opup, which is a common pattern to create dummy app calls, group them into an atomic group, and share the opcode budget. So if you send an app call A and add 15 dummy app calls into the same atomic group, app call A can now use up to 11,200 opcodes. The opcode pattern is great, but it's difficult to know exactly how much opcode an application call will use. So a lot of the times, developers have to do a guessing game of how much opcode an app call will consume and sometimes waste computational resources. Now with this upgrade to simulate, you can directly ask 320,000 opcode budget. There are two benefits of this upgrade. First, this simplifies simulating testing workflows. As you can send an app call that requires more than 700 opcodes without doing an op up by adding dummy app calls. Second, it also optimizes fee usage for production level applications. Now you can have a workflow where you first calculate how much opcode an app call will consume using simulate and then add in dummy app calls to cover the pre-calculated opcode budget. Overall, the increased logging and opcode budget made Simulate much more powerful, both for testing and production applications. There are more improvements on their way for Simulate, so stay tuned for that as well. Today, we talked about the four major upgrades included in the Algorand 3.16 protocol upgrade. This upgrade reduces block time by 400 milliseconds, making the block time approximately 3.3 seconds. This upgrade also introduces group resource sharing, allowing more references for each application call. Third, now dev mode for your local net allows you to adjust your timestamp to test time-sensitive smart contracts. Lastly, the upgrade adds more logging and opcode budget with Simulate to improve the developer experience. I only mentioned the four biggest upgrades included in this protocol upgrade, but there's a lot more included. If you're interested in learning more about this protocol upgrade, I'll leave a link in the description where you can find the full detail of this protocol upgrade. If you have any questions regarding the upgrade, head over to the Algorand Discord channel and discuss them with the Algorand Developer Relations team or our Algorand developer community. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with future protocol upgrades, product updates, and developer tutorials, make sure you like and subscribe this channel. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.